Welcome everyone to the Inspired Riding Audio Summit. We're going to be talking about the benefits of intuition in the horse world. With me today is Crystal Forzell. Crystal has been training horses and riders in dressage for over 15 years. She's originally from California where she ran a full lesson and training program and she now resides in Austin, Texas and offers services as a freelance instructor and clinician. Crystal is a USDF bronze and silver medalist, as well as a USDF L program graduate. She's also the creator of the Dressage to Go mobile app, offering audio lessons to help you develop the skills and creativity to ride in harmony and with compassion. Crystal, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm going to dive right in with the questions. What do you love most about working with horses? So I think one of the things that I love the most is that nothing else matters except for how you show up for them and how you make them feel. They don't care what clothes you wore today. They don't care about your hair. They don't care if you drove, drive a fancy rig. It just matters how they, how you make them feel. Um, And then I also love when I ride the amount of concentration that I have to have to kind of, as we all know, juggle everything at once, you know, your body and your, your rein and your leg and, and, and where you're going. But I don't even have to think about having that amount of concentration when I'm riding. It just happens. So it, it allows me to really be in the moment and not think about anything else. And then I also love the connection that they offer us. And, and that goes back to when you think about when you were a kid and you just rode, just to ride, like it, it allows you to, to carry on that kind of dream of freedom that I think horses give us. It really is amazing what they offer us. I love that answer, Crystal. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. (laughs) So what's something a horse has taught you that's changed your perspective? So I originally came from a more traditional type of writing and and training um, back in my earlier days. And that just never really quite set right with me. It just really wasn't who I was, even though that's kind of what you're around and that's what the expectations are, you know, that kind of like make them do it and make them behave and um, the trainer I was working for at the time, she even said out loud to me, you know, what I really want is someone to just ride them through the naughty stuff, ride them through the bucks and make them do it. But we both knew that wasn't me. <laughs> and so after that, I kind of like decided to myself that I needed to do things my way instead of try to do or try to be something that I was not. My mantra now is that I train horses in a way so that I don't have to be brave or that the rider doesn't have to be brave. Oh, I love that. So, yeah. If we teach horses or if we give them skills on how to work with their nervous system a little bit better and how to, well, let's back up a second. Horses are very good at that. They're very good at being a horse. They're very good at staying alive and and taking care of themselves. What we have to work with them on is how to do that in a human world. It's the human part that kind of messes them up a little bit. So we all have to work on, on that. Yes, this is so true. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's dive into the intuition part. How has your intuition helped you when interacting with horses or with your clients? So now that I'm a little more in tune with intuition, I notice a lot of times when something's going on with the horse physically. uh, And when you're working, especially when you're younger and you're just kind of starting out and you might kind of go, oh, well, maybe this isn't quite right. But at the same time, you don't want to be right off the bat yelling we need to call the vet you know and and having your clients 
spend all kinds of unnecessary money spending the vet because you, you know, maybe something wasn't quite right. So you want to be really sure. Not that we don't want to call the vet, but you just wanted to be really sure before you did that. Um, but now I, I'm so much better at it. And I'm so I'm much faster at it. And I've had all my confirmations from when we do call the vet. And it's like, well, yeah, you were right. <laughs> What do you think shifted to help you get better with your intuition? Funny enough, it was really after I had my first baby. So it wasn't horses that, that helped me in initially. It, when I had my first baby, actually with both my babies, I did not use a baby monitor because we don't, our house is not that big and I'm not really into having um extra equipment. It just seemed pretty unnecessary. But sometimes there were times that the baby would be down for a nap and I would go outside to go do something in the yard or pee away. And what I started realizing was that like I would come in the house, like I would just know when to come in the house right before or right as he started crying. So that kind of gave me a big boost of confidence when that started happening. So then I started looking for other places that um, I could use my intuition and, and start trusting it because it had shown me that I was right. I love that so much. That's so cool. You're <laughs> yeah. Tapping into the mother's intuition and then expanding it out with the horses. It's perfect. Yes. Which is so strong, right? And it's, yeah, it was kind of amazing. <laughs> I believe you. I'm not a mom for humans, but I totally yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah. I love that you got that that boost of confidence. That's huge. Yeah, it, it really was. So how has your intuition ever surprised you in life? And if so, can you share a story about it? Well, that was actually kind of how it surprised me was... Um, when I started realizing that with, with my kids, with the babies, it was like, well, oh, I, I was, I was really, I'm right. <laughs> You're way more powerful than you realized, right? It, it really was. And, and like I said, that was what kind of opened the door for me to start trusting it more with the horses. And, um, especially with the mayor that I have now and, um, cause she's so incredibly sensitive so she has given me lots of um, lots of good material to practice with <laughs> on her do you want to share more about her yeah that was kind of going into the a transformation story with her but with her at this point she's we're still in the middle of that transformation so I can't say too much on it yet because the story's not finished or even we're just still really right in the middle of that journey, but she really has shown me and solidified that following your intuition when something isn't right and um, really started putting me down a, a whole rabbit hole of energy work, both with the horses and, and with myself. So, I mean, I'm, I'm very thankful for all the things that she has led me to discover really is there something specific that really lights you up along your discoveries the energy work is really pretty fascinating and I, I I'm just kind of in the beginning of that but learning more about that there was a great book that I listened to called why woo works and I can't remember the name of the author right now but it was a really neat book because they took a lot of what we would call quote unquote woo woo kind of um different aspects of energy work and telepathy and things like that and um put some science to it that was a really interesting read which I'm going a little bit off topic now but no this is exactly where I wanted to dive into so this is awesome and it's it's really interesting I I literally just wrote a little email about what um it's not woo woo if it works so I think that's so yeah. cool that you're reading a book with that title, because if it works, yeah. then it's it's just cool. I might as well just go with it and not think it's weird, you know? 
exactly. And it's, it's, um, <laughs> we have to use the word woo woo with the muggles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I have a pillow in my office that says I can't deal with the muggles today. <laughs> So apologies <laughs> yeah. to anyone who has never read or watched the Harry Potter series, but yeah, um, we believe in magic and I think it's so important to remind ourselves how powerful we are. And it, it really isn't magic. We just are all born with it. And I love that you tapped into this because of this mare and because of your, your kiddos. It's, it's a beautiful thing to, to get to this next level and, and keep exploring and keep evolving all of your tools. Right. Yeah. And I, I only wish like, Oh, I wish I would have seen or kind of acknowledged it in my twenties, but I have it now. So I'm still thankful. Better late than never. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh yes. All the things I wish I had known in my twenties, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that, that'll lead me into a good question for you now. What's one piece of advice you would give your younger self for encouragement? So I would say always stay hungry for more, um, more education, more learning about the horse and why things work. And also to stay true to you and you do you. Like I said, there was a time that I was kind of being asked to be something different which did not work <laughs> like that did not work for me it did not work for the horses it did not work for anybody so you really have to do you absolutely I was in a similar position when I was working as an assistant trainer in California and I was literally told to smack the pony over the jumps and I and I complied but I was not happy about it yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and especially when you're when you're in your 20s and you're trying to, you know, make a name for yourself and do you what know. your trainer tells you. Yep. Yeah. Do what you're <laughs> supposed to do. And then I would also say to myself, don't worry about what everybody else is thinking, because that goes along with that, you know. Oh, yes. You know, and when we're riding at some of these fancy barns you know, it's an all dressage barn and it's like, God forbid the horse not be on the bit for, you know, a second, right? That would be like, oh, she can't ride. <laughs> now I just, I give the horses more time and they have um, just a little bit more room to, to work together rather than, I don't know, micromanaging that sort of thing. I love that. And that's what they really love is that you're, being patient with them and not demanding so much. Yeah. I mean, it really, when you, when you put yourself in their shoes, how would you like to be treated? Would you like to be your horse? Exactly. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Crystal, what lights you up and inspires you immensely in the horse world? So right now we're living in such a, I don't want to say unique, but it's it's our, the time we live in. The speed and access of information is like nothing we've ever seen before, right? And and so that's been extremely helpful because we can access. You know, we're not just limited to the trainer down the street now. We can get so much more information from trainers, from veterinarians, all the the content that's being published now, and there's a lot of really good stuff. And so it's great that we can have access to that. One of the areas of interest right now, which my mayor has kind of led me to really take a deep dive into is biomechanics. And we've made some really big advances. I think there it's, some of them are very simple, but we haven't really been acknowledging them for a very long time in the mainstream. And with, the information that's so readily available now. I'm really excited for what the future holds for, for horses in general. Like the average person can get a hold of that information now. I totally hear um, you. I'm insatiable when it comes to learning. So I, <laughs> I love that we yeah. have access to all these different training videos and different people out yeah. there in the world just 
putting out their information. It's so helpful. And just one little tidbit can shift your entire life with your horse. Absolutely. And then the other part to that is we don't have to feel alone in our horsemanship when we don't, when we go against the grain, I guess, of the, you know, your boarding barn, or maybe you board at home, you don't have people around, but now we have these networks where we can go to to collaborate with like-minded people like like your group inspired riders and and my group open minds dressage it's it's kind of amazing that we have that i mean i have like so many friends now that i've never actually met in person (laughs) kind of funny and it's wonderful and yeah and i have you as an instructor and we've never met in person either which is really cool (laughs) I know. It really is. Yeah. I love that accessibility. That's such a cool thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just so excited about, um, like I said, it, I think it's just going to make things better for, for horses. Absolutely. So Crystal, what do you wish everyone would do when it comes to their horse time? Yeah, this is a big one for me because I teach a lot of adult amateurs I teach a lot of clinics and you see it also show up when people make posts on, on social media. It's the self deprecating Mm. that, that people have when they ride their horses. And it's, I, I have to stop people all the time. I'm like, stop that. Like, you know, would you talk to your friend like that? Like, no, (laughs) you wouldn't. And it's like, our writing is supposed to be fun. And at the end of the day, we're all doing the best we can with the information that we have. So, or the abilities that we have, nobody is trying to ride bad and you don't have to be self-deprecating to yourself in your lesson in front of me to make me, you know, think that, or think anything. So I'm always telling people just stop that. It's not really serving anybody. I don't want you to feel bad. I want you to feel good about your riding. Yes, this is so true. I'm glad you mentioned that. It's so important to remind ourselves we are doing the best we can and our horses can feel that and they can sense when we're, we're being hard on ourselves and they're like, hello, come back to the fun. Let's, (laughs) let's enjoy ourselves already, you know? Yeah. And you know, I use hear people say, oh, well, you know, my trainer has to ride it because I only ride a certain level and I really, and the horse has so much talent. I don't want the talent to go to waste. I'm like, okay, there is no horse in the world sitting out in the pasture going, gee, I wish I had a better rider so I could do the pre-St. George next weekend. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen. <laughs> they just like, it all goes back to the first thing that we talked about, which was, they only care about how you make them feel. Exactly. And there are moments where yeah. Pepper's like, hey, let's go jump now. But he doesn't care about going to a horse show about doing this. He just likes to do it for the sheer joy of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, thank you for sharing that. That's a really important thing. I hope the listeners really take that in. Yeah. Yeah. That would be like my billboard of the year, I think. <laughs> Be kind to yourself. <laughs> yes. yes. And others too. You know, we're like, we're all doing the best we can. Totally. Crystal, what does the phrase, may the horse be with you always, mean to you? Yeah. So when I think of that, I think of how when I ride, I'm searching for that elusive centaur feeling. That feeling of where you begin and the horse begins all kind of melds together. And both of you just really being in the moment, in the rhythm, with softness in your riding. um, And where you can almost complete each other's sentences. That's kind of what I I think of. Oh, I love that. I kind of just saw the infinity symbol in my mind. As you were talking. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That really that feeling of being together. I mean, that's what I'm hungry for. When I ride, that's the feeling I'm looking for. 
we don't always get it, <laughs> but it, we're, that's what I'm always looking for. That's a beautiful way to set up a ride for sure. Like, are you mm-hmm. with me? Yep. So good. Well, Crystal, is there anything else that you'd like to share that I haven't asked you? I, I'd love to hear also more about your, your app dressage to go. Yeah. So dressage to go, it's, um, really excited about that. We just launched a couple months ago and it was really put together for anybody that needed extra help when they were riding. A lot of riders that are riding at home or at a stable that doesn't have access to good instructors. Now you can have access to good instruction anytime you want and just have your phone in your pocket. What was your favorite lesson to record? There's one of my favorite lessons um, that I use both in the app and all the time, which is a, a leg yield exercise. And it just really sets the, up, the horse up quite nicely in the connection and then into a canter transition, which kind of goes back to that centaur feeling of setting you up to really have them feel like they're with you. That's one of my favorite exercises on there. I love that. I use that a lot. That was one of the tips I got um, from another cross country trainer. She said, when you do your transitions, think of a tiny bit of a leg yield feeling and that'll help you organize your horse. Yeah. Yeah. This exercise is um, a leg yield that you start by going across the diagonal with the horse, horses chest facing the letter. And then you change it so that you and the horse face the short side. So now you're leg yielding. And then you can go back to the diagonal feeling and then back to the leg yield. And then by the time you reach the the corner on the other side of the diagonal, you're perfectly set up for a transition. Oh, I love that. I need to look at that one again. <laughs> <laughs> and how's the feedback been for your app? Oh, it's been great. I mean, people really love having the um the instruction helps keep you motivated because how often, you know, when you're not really sure what you're supposed to be doing with your horse, you kind of go, uh huh, trot canter around the arena a couple times and let's go for a trail ride. Like, <laughs> but when you have a little more direction and a little more motivation, it's, it's easier to um, keep going and, and do your schooling. You can still do trail ride, but you can do your schooling and both you and your horse can make some pretty good progress that way. I love that. It helps you stay accountable to really push yourself and your horse to do things you wouldn't necessarily think of. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I'm all about experimenting with our horses. So you can try something and if it doesn't quite jive for you, well, find the next exercise. You know, maybe that wasn't the exercise for you today, but try it. You might find something that actually you could do that you weren't, you didn't know you could do. And that brings us all the way back to trusting your intuition. So your app is perfect where people can like literally look through it like a menu and decide, hmm, this is what's lighting me up. This is what I want to try with my horse today. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, Crystal, I really appreciate your time. And I will share the links for how people can check out the app and get a hold of you for remote lessons. And thank you so much for being here. You're so welcome. And thanks again for having me. You're welcome. And may the horse be with you always. (laughs) Thank you.